Okay, so what you're seeing now is the main patching window, and um, this is the presentation view that you see if you're playing the game, and then this is the patching window. I'm going to explain uh, a couple of the different parts of this patch and how it works. The, the main thing is navigation, so where is the playing area? So the game exists in a virtual sort of uh, a 34 by 34 grid, which we can see here. You're best watching this in 1080p full screen if you want to see these, these numbers, because they're very small. Basically, um, wherever the player is, or each tile, or possible location of the player is stored with a value, um, and that value changes um, when you enter an input. So when you do the up, down, left, right arrow keys, or use the up, down, left, right buttons that I put in, um, the uh, matrix starts on a 1 and goes to 34 for the first row, the next row is 35, to 68 and so on, all the way up to, I think it's 1,156. So when the player starts, they, they get seeded into a random uh, uh, tile in this area here. I'm clicking frantically so you can see that. Somewhere around here, basically. Um, when the player's in the game, they can then navigate around um, using those arrow keys, um, which basically... so let's say the starting tile here we've we've got is is 285 so we're on 285 let's zoom in and have a look at that on the grid so uh 285 is just here let's say we want to go to the right one we just hit the right key and what that will do is add one to our value which will take us to 286 if we wanted to then go up we could just hit up and that would add 34 to our value which would take us to 320 similarly if we wanted to go back down we we hit the down arrow which adds negative 31 which will take us down this is great um, except when it comes to the edge of the map I want to make sure the player stays within the inner 32 by 32 grid and the way we do that is by having this out of bounds layer whoops out of bounds layer here which whenever the player lands on one of these tiles and the uh, the location registers one of these numbers it immediately bounces the player back to where they were the way I'm able to achieve that is that when um, a change is made to the value when an input comes in it's stored temporarily in a message box and then a delayed bang and the bang gets sent whenever you whenever you put any any of the inputs um, gets delayed by ten milliseconds, which is just enough time. Well, not just enough time; it's ages, relatively, um, to check whether you're about to land on an out out of bounds tile. If you do la are about to land on an out of bounds tile, it will change that value back to where you were coming from within that ten milliseconds. So the end result when that bang eventually hits the message is that you don't move you stay in the same spot and because i've got this change object here it doesn't reinitialize your um, image it basically the patch thinks that you haven't moved at all it treats it like you haven't entered any input which is incredibly useful um, let me show you the out of bounds um, system here this looks incredibly cumbersome and i'm sure there are easier ways to do this but i couldn't come up with a method that worked that was uh, that didn't have any sort of latency or bugginess to it and to be honest this works perfectly fine it was just a bit cumbersome to patch so what's happening here is we have uh, the the value when whenever you change your position gets sent via this gpos object which is your grid position and that will send the value even if you try and land on an out of bounds tile it then gets run through these 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 little sort of mini patches here and if the value that it, that it receives is an out-of-bounds tile, it will bounce you back to the tile that you would have come from. So let's have a look at the, the patch here. Let's say we were on... So let's say it says you're on tile 40. Let's find that here. So the select object um, tile... Oh, I beg your pardon. So yeah, you would have been on tile 40 and then moved to tile 6. So that's when it would, it would register here. So here you can see... Uh, number six in the select object. So if you did land on tile six, that would immediately send out a bang to this message object, which would send the number 40 back to the out of bounds uh, check from before, which we can see again. I've got patches and sub patches, which is here, which then gets sent immediately to the object here. So when the bang reaches, um, nothing has changed. So here's the order of operations, and we can see that if I uh, play the game now. So this here is tile uh, 47 that we're on. So let's have a look at that on the grid, tile 47. It's right here. So when I hit down, 
what's going to happen is the value is going to change to 13 and then it's immediately going to change back to 47. That's the value in this message object. But it's going to change back to 47 by the time the bang from my input has registered. So nothing's going to happen. And you may see this change. Keep an eye on this. Hopefully you'll see it change to 13. Oh, it's, too, it's just too quick to do that. You can see this object changing, actually. There we go. There we go, you can just see it changing. Hopefully the frame rate's good enough for you to see that. But it's just changing to 13, but changing back in almost instantaneously. And the out, the uh, upshot of that is visually nothing happens. So if I press up, I go up. If I press down, I go down. But if I press down one more time, nothing happens. And that's very important for keeping the player within the game and not moving around uh, where they shouldn't. The one other thing I need to talk about to do with this um, out of bounds system we go back to the out of bounds system here is the exit tile and the exit tile if you remember from the gameplay video is where the basically the goal of the map exists so at some point well not at some point when the patch is loaded one of these out of bounds tiles these light gray tiles here becomes our exit our goal but is inactive until you press that uh, candle switch that you would have seen in the previous video at that point that value is then sent to this matrix here this um sorry, not matrix, but series of patches here. And wherever the value is of the out of the exit tile, for example, let's say our exit tile is 511, okay? So let's find 511 here. I'll go into locked mode so you can see it. There we go, here's 511. What happens is that then sends out um, a bang which sends a, a zero message to a cold inlet on the 511 on this select object, which means now whenever you... Um, uh, th this, this select object basically has a zero in place of where the, um, the uh, exit tile would be. So when the out-of-bounds check occurs, it doesn't trigger anything because that, that particular tile is no longer considered out-of-bounds. It will just send you to the exit tile. So that's basically navigation... Um, within this map. Now the next important thing is what's in each tile. And I'm going to talk about that now with the uh, uh, this uh, patch we've got in front of us which which fills the, the, the grid in front of us with contents, with, with stuff to do basically. So a table object is used to store values which correspond to what's in um, each each tile. A value of zero means the tile's blank, so you'll just see, you know, empty grass. A, t a value of one means there's an enemy in that tile that's alive. A value of two is a closed chest. Three is a dead enemy, which is the gravestone. Four is an open chest. Five is an unlit candle, and six is a lit candle. So I'm just going to open this here and hit reset, and you'll be able to see all of this is about to change. There we go. It's a little bit, little bit fidgety. I'm going to do it one more time, and the actual UI for this isn't isn't very friendly. It sort of chugs along, but you can see the very lowest value. Most of the map is empty. The majority of it is is empty, um, or the sorry, the the high, highest percentage is that the the uh, tile will be empty. The next highest percentage is that there'll be an enemy in that tile. The next highest percentage is that there'll be a chest, and then we've got here. This will be the value for the the exit tile here. Sorry, not the exit tile, the, the candle location. So let me show you what's happening. A, a metro object is triggered, a bang is sent out to this random object which, which triggers one of these three values into the cold inlet of the grid, of the uh, table, sorry. And then the left inlet is the position of the grid. So we've got a grid here which goes all the way up to 100 and uh, 1,156. So basically this table has 1,156 positions along the x-axis and the y-axis has uh, uh, seven possible positions it could be. And this is basically seeding that with, with values. Now, the only reason there's four of these is to just speed up that process because if I did it um, with just one object, it takes about two seconds, which I thought was too cumbersome. But with this, with a little bit of math, I've basically done it. So each one of these little versions of the uh, sort of patch um, fills the table at once. So it's filling a quarter at a time. I'm going to see if I can show you this in action by using um, a, a metro object to slow us down. So if I change the metro object to be 
10 seconds now. In this case, the value of, I'll wait for it to, uh, to bang once more, the value of zero was sent to position one in the grid. Now the value of one is sent to position two. And it basically goes on like this, um, 10 seconds looking back and it was probably too long. So a value of zero was sent to position three and so on. So if I now uh, send that, change that back to two and just reset the patch, you can see that it fills everything at once. So that's how I'm able to create uh, the, the tile contents so that they're random uh, each time and they change each time. And when you get to the certain stage in the map where you unlock the candle and you get to a certain level, this all opens up and you can see the contents of that, which of course will be different each time.